I know he had those little Bibles. And it was like, oh yeah, that's cute. I love that. God is good. Y'all make sure that y'all think about me when you when you drive by uh, Dunkin' Donuts to get your treat <laughs> this uh, this week. No, don't think about me. Just enjoy it. I'm going to talk to you today real quick. Uh, dads in the image of God. I want to ask the dads a couple of questions first this morning before I get started. But the first thing I want to ask you is, um, did anybody come over here on Friday afternoon and drop a bookmark on the sidewalk? Anybody drop a bookmark? Did y'all drop a bookmark last week? Looks like this. I, I, I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. The second question I'm going to ask you is, what does the Lord require of you, dads? What does the Lord require of a man? What does he require? And third, what image are you portraying to your children? Is it a worldly image or is it a godly image? Which one is it? What is it? You've got to think about it. All week long, the Lord would only give me one thing for Father's Day. And it was like, okay, Lord, I'm going to get somebody else to, to preach because they got the word. He'd say, no, no. It's Micah 6 and 8. And I'd question him. I said, what else, Lord? What else? You know, you got to have a little something to give people when you come behind the pulpit. So I was, I was preparing this week, this past week. I had to prepare for a, a service yesterday that I went to and, and uh, preached at for the ladies group at uh, Cindy Miller's church in Statham. And, and, of course, I had to get my Sunday school class uh, lesson ready this morning. Did y'all enjoy it this morning? Y'all go ahead and say, yes, I enjoyed learning about water baptism. We learned about water baptism this morning, and uh, they were very helpful. They're always very helpful to me, and I appreciate that. Um, they know a lot more than they might, know, they might tell their parents. They know a whole lot more about the Bible, about, about Scripture, about the things that goes on in the church. They know more. They're watching. I'm making that point so that you fathers will listen because children are watching. And mothers too. Mothers, every one of us. Aunts, uncles, anything that, any, anytime that we're around anybody, we have to watch what we say because their ears are listening. But all the Lord was saying was Micah 6 and 8. Micah 6 and 8. I wasn't satisfied, y'all. I was not satisfied. I said, Lord, you got to have something else. you got to help me here. i got to know something. So Friday morning I came over here and I cleaned the church. Okay, I got it all done, got everything ready. I finished up, I left, I closed the door, I walked out. Got in my car and left. Well, I needed to do something else. I'd remembered I got to do something else or got to pick something else up. I don't remember which one it was exactly. So that afternoon I came back. I had to come back to the church. And when I pulled up, just as soon as I pulled up, I noticed that there was something on the sidewalk. And it was sitting there, I mean, just like this, open, just like this. It was on this side, opened up on the sidewalk right there. And I walked up, and I had to say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for not trusting you. Forgive me. This pastor had to say, forgive me, Lord, because I didn't trust you enough. But it was the exact scripture that he told me all week long. Micah 6, verse 8. That's what it is. See, the Lord gets his point across. He will tell you if you will listen. But sometimes you want more. You want, no, Lord, that's not enough. I need some more. I got to have like 10 pages worth, Lord, please come on, you know, that kind of stuff. No, no, we just have to trust him and wait on him. That's a big thing is waiting, being patient. I talked about being patient yesterday to the ladies. I said, I didn't tell you to pray for patience. Don't pray for patience because if you do, you're going to have a Job experience, people. I promise you that. You'll have a Job experience. Just learn patience. Just wait. Wait on the Lord. Wait patiently on the Lord and He will give you what you need. That was loud and clear to me. When I walked up and I saw this and I said, I about fell to my knees right there. Right there. Because I knew. That's why I was going to ask, did anybody lose it? Did anybody lose it? Somebody came to this church and dropped this somewhere along the way uh, between the hours that I was here. But Micah 6 and 8 says, 
He has shown thee, O man. He has shown thee. God has shown thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. To walk humbly with your God. God will make it plain to us as He did with me. He will make it plain to us. He will give us, he will give us the where, when, how, and, and what. Plainly. We just have to trust Him. We have to believe that He's going to do that. And He does it through His Word. I was telling the kids this morning, I said, the, uh, I had somebody tell me this week, the Lord just don't talk to me. The Lord just don't talk to me. I don't hear anything the Lord says. And I had to stop them and say, listen, let me ask you. Let me ask you this morning. Have you opened up the Word? Because God is in this Word all over the place. This is where God speaks to us mostly. Yes, He will speak to us in our hearts. He will speak to us in our minds. He will speak to us audibly at times. He has spoken to people audibly with an audible voice. He'll speak through a donkey. And if he'll speak through a donkey, he'll speak through any of us. I'm telling you, God will listen. I mean, God will give you a word. But sometimes we just have to listen. We have to read. We have to get it in our spirit. This is what you're saying, Lord. If you want something, you don't have anything, go to the Psalms. If you want to learn how to act, go to Proverbs. Oh, there's, the, oh, the scriptures are full of things. It's simple what God is looking for, people. It's very simple. God is looking for obedience. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's looking for obedience. Now, dads, we're talking about you mostly today. I just want you to know that. But all these scriptures, they apply to every one of us. Not just the dads, not just the, the moms, but every one of us, including all the children. All the children, because you can understand. God will give you an understanding about what is being said, what the Word says, because He says His, His Word will not return void. It will go out, and it's going to accomplish everything that He sets it out to accomplish. Let me tell you, uh, uh, Debbie and Charlie have, uh, have all kinds of pl- uh, things in their, in their home, and they've got the Word written on it. Now I'm telling you, that Word's not going to return void. Every time those kids look at that Word, and they read that word, they're going to remember that word one day. It might not be today. It might not be when they're a teenager. It might not be when they're adult or early on. But I'm going to tell you, one day, they're going to remember. They're going to remember. If I can remember at five years old what my teach, Sunday school teacher said, I know good and well that a kid can, can uh, remember. And so can an adult. Oh, God wants us. He wants us to be loyal to Him. He wants us to have compassion for people. He wants us to have compassion. And He wants us to take Him serious. He wants us to be serious. Is, is, is it okay to laugh and have fun? Absolutely. Absolutely. We had a good time yesterday, didn't we, April? I mean, Martha was laughing. Martha was having a good time. And, and I probably embarrassed my daughter, Valana. And, and, you know, but I'm telling you, it was good. And God is, enjoys that. If, if you, take a, you take a look every once in a while and you, just, well, you stop and, and you just look at the things in your life. Sometimes you just want to get sad. But I'm going to tell you, if you just laugh about them, It'll be so much better. Be so much better. Oh, oh, yeah, that happened. But God brought me through. God brought me through. In the Bible days, we find dads that, that lived for God. They trusted God. They prayed. And they depended totally and completely on God's direction. They led their families in the way of the Lord. You can find that all through the Bible. When you look, you can find that all through the Bible. Today, today's a different story. It's a sad, different story. Our society, there are far and few between. Sometimes, other than the churches, you don't see dads out there that are, that are uh, living for the Lord. Statistics in the U.S. You know I like to give statistics when, when, I, when we have holidays. It was staggering to me when I read that 19.5 million children, that's one in four children, one in four children live without a father in the home. 
that live without a father, 63% of them that commit suicide. Did y'all hear that? 63%. 60% turn into rapists. Now, I'm just being plain with you this morning. That's the statistics that I found. And 72% of children that, that have lived without a father in the home serve sentence, are serving sentences right now for murder. God help us. God help us. God help us. It makes me want to run to the altar. I don't know about you, but it makes me want to run. When I was reading these, I just fell on my knees in front of my chair and I said, God, God, something's got to change. Something's got to change, Lord. And he says, Martha, it's the last days. It's the last days. These things are going to happen, but you don't stop praying. Because I will change people in your family. I will change people on your job. I will change people out in the, in the grocery stores. Just as it, it, You can just pass by and smile at somebody. And they know there's something different about you. I've heard you tell me that before. There's, there's something different about you. Yeah, it's the Lord. That's when you open up and you begin to tell them that it's the Lord. 70% say that whether they're in the home or not, that at least dads need to be engaged in their children's lives. That's the good thing. That's the good part. 70% of people say, yeah, dads need to be the ones that are, that are not in the home. They need to be engaged. And I thank God. I thank God that the ones that I know are engaged with their children. They are there. They are helping. They are doing for them. And I'm very thankful for that. What does the Lord require of you, Dad? What does the Lord require of us as adults, every one of us, but to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God? Dads, these are things you do. These are things you do. Do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. They're not things that you just say. They're not things that you just say. We must, you must, dads must teach their children while they're little. They need to be taught while they're little, people. Let me tell you, they need to be taught while they're little. When they're little, it's easier to get it in them. It's easier to, for, for, them to, for it to stay in them. When you wait, when, you're, when they're older and when they're, when they're, gone, when they're gone, grown and gone, it's harder. It's harder to get them back. It's harder to get them back into church. Therefore, no, we know that actions speak louder than words anyway. Actions speak louder than words. Those kids are impress impressionable, very impressionable. So show them by action, by what you do, because action speaks louder than words. Therefore, God created you, old daddy, to be a man of action. To be a man of action. To guide the children in the right direction. Like the Bible, uh, the dads in the Bible do. To strengthen them. To, to walk with them. And, and to lead them. Just, just to be a father. Like our father. Like your father is. Father God. I'm talking about Father God. Because some don't have good dads. I understand that. This is a, a sin sick world. And we understand that. But we got a father in heaven. That we can look to, no matter what kind of daddy you had or you have. No matter, we've got a father. We've got a daddy we can look to in heaven. And know without a doubt that he's going to love us. That he's going to wrap his arms around us. And that he's going to be there for us. We just got to trust him. How many times a day do I say that? Just got to trust him. If you don't trust him, he's just going to stand there. Hey, are you there? Hey, hey. Come on, you know. You know who I am. Come on. Are you there? Are you there? He's standing at the door knocking is what the Bible says. Am I not right? Being a dad, it's an awesome, awesome responsibility. It's a new life that is brought into this world. Brought into this world. But with that also comes reality. And let me tell you what the reality is. This little life that you had a part of bringing into this world, that little life, 
that little life is going to live forever. They're going to live forever somewhere. And we only got two choices. There's only two choices. Heaven or hell. That's it. That's it. There, when, when you're gone, when you leave this world, there is nothing else. Heaven or hell. That's it, people. I'm telling you, I am being as plain as I possibly can this morning because this is what the Lord said last night. It's either heaven and hell, those two choices. Dad, it's your responsibility to teach them the ways of the Lord so that heaven will be their eternal home one day. It's really important to us, really important that we learn and that we know that heaven is, will be worth it all. That's what my mama used to say. Heaven will be worth it all when we make it home, when we get home. Let me ask you right here. Do you live up, fathers, dads, do you live up to that responsibility? Do you talk about the Lord to your children? Do you tell them about the Lord? Like, like the Lord told Moses, you know, make, a, make sure that you, that you speak like, like the Lord told David or David prayed in, in 1 Chronicles 28 and 9. He said, And Solomon, my son, learn, learn to know the God of your ancestors intimately. Learn to know Him intimately. It's so important. Worship and serve Him with your whole heart and a willing mind for the Lord. Sees every heart and he knows every plan and thought. He knew what you planned yesterday to do before you even got out of the bed. He knew what you were going to do. He saw what you had in your mind and in your, in your thoughts. If you seek him, you will find him. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. This is word. This is not what Martha says. This is nothing that Martha says. This is the word of God. The word that you can stand on. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away. But my word will never, ever, ever pass away. It will be here forever and ever. It will live on in eternity. God's word. That's why it's so important to get it. King David was speaking to his son Solomon right here. And he's telling him, listen, son, listen. Don't forget God. Learn what you can about Him. Worship Him and serve Him with your whole heart, with everything you got in you. That's why I'm so passionate, Lena. That's why I'm so passionate because I want people to know God. And I want people to serve Him and worship Him because He's a good God. He's a great God. He's a God above all gods and there's none like Him. Hallelujah. None like Him. Hallelujah. Remember the five foolish virgins. They had, they had run out of their oil. Five of them had all they needed. They prayed. They fasted. They read the word. They've done whatever you know we do now. They, they, they were doing that. But there was five of them. They just sit around and didn't do nothing. They'd say, oh, I got enough. That, that, that'll get me through to the, to the bridegroom comes and we can go in with him. He'll be here. He'll be here. He, he's coming. He's going to be here in just a few minutes. They didn't prepare themselves. That's what I'm talking about. If we don't prepare ourselves for when the time that the Lord comes, we're going to be knocking. Lord, Lord, open to us. Open to us, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you. But I'm going to tell you, it's not going to happen. He's going to say, sorry, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I was thinking about the song. I had not thought about it. And I know Lena and uh, April will probably remember it. And, and y'all probably know it too, Kenny. It says, sorry I never knew you. Sorry I never knew you. Depart from me forevermore. Sorry I never knew you. Go and serve the one that you served on earth. Oh, there's a lot of verses to it. And I mean it goes into it. And I mean it is a story and a half. Y'all remember it? You know it? I'm telling you, that's what the Lord's going to say to us if we're not ready. That's what He's going to say. If we're not ready, 
when he comes, when the bridegroom comes, just like the five virgins that were not ready, they had to go out looking for oil. They had to go to the store and see if they could find some. And it might have been during the pandemic and they wouldn't have found any for sure. I'm telling you, you've got to think about these things. You've got to have yourself ready. You, it's up, to, it, it's up to me to prepare myself. It's up to you to prepare yourself. It's not, up to, it's not up to your grandma because you've heard it all your life. You can't ride into heaven on your grandma's cart tail. You can't do it. It ain't going to happen. It's going to be you and you alone all by yourself. You're going to stand before God. You will stand before God. I will stand before God. We will. It will happen. Some people don't believe it, but it will happen. The Lord warns us. He warns us to be spiritually prepared. To have our wedding garments on. Be ready. Be ready. Be unspotted from this world. I'm going to give you just a few biblical uh, requirements of a dad real quick. I'm just going to go through these real quick. The first one is represent or mirror a good life. 2 Corinthians 3, 2 and 3 in the New, a new Life translation says, the only letter of recommendation we need is for you yourselves. Your lives are a letter written in our hearts. Everyone can read it and recognize it. This letter, quote unquote, is not written with pen and ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. It is carved not on tablets of stone, but on the human heart. On the human heart. How, how, how we live. How we portray. Dad's how you portray yourself in front of your children. It, it's, like, it's like that letter that's being written. That letter that they're reading. They're reading it. I'm going to tell you. I used to teach the teenagers at the other church. They're reading you. <laughs> oh, are they reading you? And they will tell you, please pray for my mama. Please pray for my daddy because this is what happened. And, and, and it goes on and on and on. Be careful. Be careful what you say, what you do because your kids are listening. Y'all listening, kids? See? They said, yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening. I've even got a little bitty one that's listening. Yeah. And it's going in. I see it. I see it in the eyes. It's going in. Dads, let me ask you, what's in your letter? What's in your letter that your kids are reading? Second thing is provide for the children. 1 Timothy 5 and 8 says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, and he's worse than an infidel. If dad doesn't provide for his own, number one, he's selfish. I'll be honest with you. He's selfish. They've denied the faith. They pay no attention to the faith. And it's, it, it's, it's, it's actually it's time to, to repent. During that time, it's time for them to repent. Or they're worse than an infidel, the Bible says. And that means that they don't even believe in religion or, or that, they have, that they have their own religion. And we know, we know people like that. They're out there everywhere. They have their own and they don't believe. They don't trust God. These are the things that you do. You provide for your children. Not just physically, but spiritually. Fathers, listen. Everybody that's watching online, listen. Provide for your children, not just physically, but spiritually. Spiritually. The third thing is spend time with them. God commands this. Did you, under, did you know that? God commands that you spend time with them. Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9. This is the King James Version. It says, in these words which I command thee this day, that's God speaking, shall be in thine heart. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, shalt talk with them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest in the way and when thou liest down and when thou rise up and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. Put the word of God out there. Put the, it's like a frontlet between your eyes. It's a, it's a, the frontlet is a headband with a box that's, that's written, that's got the scrolls written on it. And thou shalt write them upon the post of your house and your gates. Now I can tell you, I, I, I can tell you right now for sure, and Bologna knows it too. Colleen knows it too. There's at least four houses in Decula, Georgia that's got on the, 
<laughs> that's got on their, on their uh, studs. Scripture. Those people living in those houses are walking around with Scripture. They might not see it, but it's there. And I prayed it out every day. Every day because when those studs come up, I said, now it's time to write, girls. Let's go. You know, let's go. So we wrote Scripture. I don't know what else y'all write. I ain't asking. No, I don't want to know. In, in this chapter, in this chapter that, that I just read, Moses had received the commandments. He received the statutes and the, and the judgments from the Lord. He received these things. And, and the Lord told him, says, Tell these things to the children. Make sure the children get this. Teach them how to love the Lord with all their heart and with all their soul. This is your duty, Daddy. This is your Daddy duty. You hear me? This is it. Don't provoke your children. That's the next thing. Ephesians 6 and 4. And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Don't agitate them. Don't aggravate them. Don't irritate them. Don't make them angry. Talk to them. Talk to them. And give them Jesus. Give them Jesus. Raise them up in love. Raise them, raise them according to God's Word. That's the best way. There is no other way for me. There is no other way but to raise them up in the admonition of the Lord. And don't ever, don't ever give up on them. I don't care what your kids do when they grow up. All you that have got small children now, don't ever give up on them. Sometimes you want to. You feel like, you feel like a failure as a parent. I've been there. I know. I just feel, you know, even when my kids, uh, and, and I'm talking about when they were little and they wouldn't behave for me, you know, in the grocery store and Colleen would lay out in the front of the, I'm sorry, Colleen, but I got to tell this one. <laughs> Colleen would lay out in front of the door of Kmart in Lilburn and she would not get up. And Mama would say, Colleen, if you'll get up, Nanny will buy you something. Come on, come on, go with me. And she said, no, I want to go home. I want my bed. I want my bed. And see, I felt like a failure because I didn't know what to do. I would drag her up and have to go back to the car with her or take her in the store screaming because she wanted her bed. You know, those kind of things. You feel like you have just failed. But don't give up. Don't give up. Because see, one day, one day you might have them standing right here. You might have them standing right here. And they're the one praising and worshiping the Lord. They're the ones singing. Don't give up on them, Daddy. Don't give up on them. God is good. What does the Lord require of you, Daddy? He requires of you to do justly. He wants you to be fair and impartial. He wants you to love mercy, love, lovingly respond in unexpected ways. Daddy, those, those of you that have girls, pick a flower. Pick a flower. Joey has, I, I have a, a, a bush at home, gardenia bush, and Joey will pick one every day and bring them to me. And it makes my kitchen and my living room smell so good. Daddies, you can do that. If you got if you got flowers in your yard, if you don't, stop by Publix, stop by Ingles, pick up one rose for your little girl. Help that help that son, teach that son all about the cars or, or the yard or whatever you whatever you like, whatever you do. Teach them, help them, do something unexpectedly, and always forgive them. Always forgive them. Joey taught me something, and I think I've told some of you this. He taught me when we first, when we first met, I was, I was always the one that was saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But when I met Joey, the first thing he said when I, when I said, oh, I'm sorry, Joey, I'm sorry, he says, Martha, there are no sorries. I loved you the first time I saw you. And there are no sorries. That's what we need to do with our children. Even though they make mistakes. Even though they mess up. 
saying us sorry. You don't have to apologize. We're just going to forgive and go on. We're not going to worry about it. We're just going to forgive and go on. We're going to learn the lesson. Oh, yes, we need to learn the lessons, but go on. And then walk humbly. Be teachable. Be grateful. Slow to offend. Be respectful. Dads, mirror image the Father to your children. I want to remind you of one statement that I made in the beginning. Dad, you are portraying one of two images, not only to your children, but to the world. The worldly image or the godly image. And I would ask you, which one do you want your children to see? Which one do you want your children to see? I'm talking to everybody. I'm talking to all of us now. Which one do you want people to see in you? A a, a godly image or a worldly image? It's not going to get you anywhere. Worldly images don't get us anywhere. They might get you somewhere on this earth, but you've got eternity. You've got eternity to live. We all have eternity to live. And all sometimes that we think about is the present. But we got to think we're going to live forever somewhere. Heaven or hell, it's up to you. It's your choice. God give us that. He put that within us to make our own choice. And it's up to each and every one of us. Right now, before we, before we close out, I just... I want all the dads, just just the dads, I want y'all to stand up for a minute, right where you are. Come on, y'all. I know there's some daddies here. I ain't ain't gonna make y'all do anything, so go ahead. Jeff, stand yourself up. Stand up, Jeff. You can do that. We love him. He's so, he's so sweet. Um, what I want everybody else to do, I want you to look around at the dads that we've got standing here. There's six of them here this morning. I want y'all to look around. Now, all of you, take a look at them. Turn around and look at them because I want y'all to pray for them this week. Everybody that's sitting, I want you to remember every man that's standing in here. And I want you to pray for them because they got a heavy load on them. Even even if their children are grown, y'all can sit down, man. Even if their children are grown and gone, they still they still got a heavy burden on them because they pray for their children. They pray for their family. And I'm telling you, that's what it's all about: is praying and believing God and trusting God. Just make sure that you remember these dads this week. Let's all close our eyes. Lord, we thank you, God, for your word today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're touching hearts, that you're moving, God, in a mighty way. Lord, I know that you are. I know that you can get to our hearts, Lord, with your word quicker, God, than anything that I could say, anything that I could do, Lord. So I know, God, that you're speaking to these fathers today. You're, t- you're, you're moving upon them, God. You're giving them ideas in their hearts and in their minds, God. Lord, we know that they love their children. We understand that, Father God. And we know, God, as each individual in here, Lord, we love everybody. We love everybody that's here. We love everybody, Lord. And we thank you, God that we can come before you today, Lord, worshiping you and praising you and lifting up your name, Lord, because you're such a great father. Lord, for those of us that don't have fathers here, oh God, touch our hearts, Lord, as we remember our daddies and remember what they done and how they raised us and, and their love for us, God, even though some were quiet, Some were outspoken. Whatever they were, Lord, we know that there was an influence upon us. And we thank you for that, Father God. 
Lord, I just ask you to touch the fathers today, Lord. Touch them and bless them, Lord. Show them your ways. Teach them your paths, God, so that they will be able, God, to raise their children up, to be able, God, to, to live for you, Father God, and to, to show them, Lord, how to live for you because God is the utmost importance this day especially, Lord, during this time, Lord, because we know that your return is not far off because the Bible's almost completed. Oh, God, how we love you. How we love you and how we praise you. With every head bound, every eye closed this morning, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to open up the altar because I don't, I don't ever, the Lord said, don't leave any service, no matter what, without opening up the altar. So I'm just going to ask you this morning, if there's anybody, anybody that needs to pray, anybody that wants to come, especially if you're not saved, if you're not living for the Lord, if you've, if you've went back on God and you, you, just, you know that it's your time, He's calling you. He's calling us. He calls me to the altar all the time. And I know if He calls me, He's calling others. And if there's anybody, I'm just going gonna, gonna to stand here quietly for just a minute because I don't want to leave without you having the opportunity because I don't know your heart, but God does. God knows. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you have any doubts, any doubts whatsoever, oh, would you come this morning? Would you come? Holy, holy God. mighty way, God. In a mighty way. April, will you come pray with her? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Anybody else? You're welcome to come and stand around these and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. God, in Tiffany's life, Lord, in her family's life, God, draw them to you, Lord. Draw them to you, Father God. You see her heart, Lord. You see the brokenness, Father. Oh, God, you see the brokenness of them all, Lord God. Touch in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We plead your blood, Lord. We plead your blood. In the name of Jesus upon these, Lord, today. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Oh, yes, Lord, you are our Savior. You are wonderful, God, and we thank you, Lord Jesus. Tiffany's holding on, God. She's holding on for her family, Lord. And we know, God, that you're making a way for her, Lord. We know that you are, God. You are the load bearer. Oh, God, you're the load bearer, Lord. We thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank 
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Absolutely. What kind of third tradition? Yeah. I can ask you. We're going to pray for uh, Stephanie, y'all. Just, just point, point your hands toward Lena this morning. She needs a touch. God, in the name of Jesus. Father, you see, Lord, what she's went through with this surgery, God. And we ask you, Lord, right now, through the power of your word, Lord, right now, God. Oh, Father, do a healing, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Instantly, Lord. Instantly, Lord. We believe, God. We believe, Lord Jesus. You said you'd do a quick work. And, Lord, we believe that it'll be instant, God. Lord, she's got children to take care of. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen her, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, bring her forth, Lord. In the... In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bring her forth, God. Bring her forth into your kingdom, God, the way that you want her, Lord. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus, raise her up, Lord. Raise her up, God. Oh, to be a mighty warrior for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name. Oh, let her be a soul. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. This is for Barbara's brother, right? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hold this right here. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, right now, God, you know where Tommy's at, Lord. You know what he's doing, Father. You got your eyes on him, Lord. Lord, there's nowhere that he can hide. There's no place that he can go, Lord, that you won't be there. He can go to the highest mountain, Lord, and you're right there. He can go to the depths of the sea, to the very depths of hell, Lord, but you're right there with him. God, bring the boy out, God, in the name of Jesus. Wake him up in the midnight hours, Lord. Oh, God, in the midnight hours, Lord, and let him know that you're right there, that you are protecting him, Father God. Oh, Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. Give him a sound mind. A sound mind, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory to the Lamb of God. Oh, who sits high and he looks low. <laughs> oh, and as Isaiah said, his train fills the temple. Oh, God, how we love you, Lord. How we love you, how we praise you, how we worship you. Have your way, Lord. Seal your word, Lord, today. Seal your word to our hearts today, God, that we won't forget what you said, Lord. What do you require of us but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God? Oh, how we thank you, Lord, and how we praise you. You are wonderful, and we thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, Barbara. Barbara's got something she wants to say this morning. Uh, oh, you got it. Okay, April's got it. Go ahead, April. You do it then. <laughs> I thought whoever, it don't matter with me. You're it today, Joey. You can close us up when they finish, okay? Close us up in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ain't God good. Yes, he is. All the time. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Joey. Did you help that man on the road today? Yes, I did. 
he was okay. Yeah, and he ran into the bank. Yeah. But he's okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Joey. I was asking the Lord what to give you. <laughs> well, this is what the Lord was dealing in my heart about to tell you. He said he wants you to know that you were being groomed ever since you was a little boy. Yeah. Your heart, your mind, your character, everything about you, he was right. grooming. And there were things that you had walked through that you didn't understand, but God says, I was in it. I was grooming Thank you. you. Jesus. Thank you Jesus. I was molding you for Thank this appointed you. time and season. And he says, there's more to come. And he said that he has been with you through it all. Through it all, he's been with you. Hallelujah. And I want to read to you from Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9. Have I not commanded thee to be strong? He's calling you to strength on this day. Hallelujah. To be strong and of good courage. No matter what you see or what's going on around you or how you feel, how that flesh feels, God is calling you to strength and to be of good courage because He is with you. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thou God is with thee wherever thou shalt go. Wherever you go, Joey, God says, I'm there. He says, I'm working on your character still. And he's grooming you. He says, I'm going to bless the work of your hands. Hallelujah. He is the God that blesses you and smiles upon you. And he's giving you a boldness. Hallelujah. Just speak, he said. He wants you to speak. Hallelujah. And this is what the Lord has given me. And I want to tell you, we honor you. We bless you. We appreciate you, Joey. We thank you that you take care of every little detail concerning the church, the business, everything. The sound. Hallelujah. It's his stuff, but God's in those details. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you are blessed and highly favored before the Lord. And he smiles upon you. You're, you were a leader in the making, God says. Hallelujah. That's what I hear God say. He said, you are a leader in the making. You were a leader in the making. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. And we appreciate you. And we wanted to give you this. And we love you, Joey. And you're awesome. And you're the best. Something in the bottom here. Thank you all. Let's stand and pray. Oh God, you are our Father, and we, we thank you, and we love you, and we thank you that you've not allowed us to forget you. You have not allowed us to forget you. Glorify your name. Be with us the rest of this day. May we walk in your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.